Exactly, uh, I've been... Look out! Hello, Paddy. I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. I was just going I to... I thought I'd ask you to help me with the windows. Yes, Mrs. I was just on my way All up All right, to... then. Let's make a start. Uh, the hardest working lad in the parish. If I had the time, I'd give you a hand myself. Well, God bless you both. What's it done? Would you like a drink? I've got the feeling Mrs. Kearney's not a virgin. But I'm not proud. She knows the way to a man's heart. <laughs> and other places, too. every week and do a few chores for me. I'd like that. Paddy, don't forget. Uh, no, miss. I'll be up on Saturday to do the windows. <laughs>
I got you ten. Big deal. Hey, hey, don't do anything silly with your money, will you? Has it occurred to you? You're turning out to be a terrible sponger. I mean, it's about time you started work. You know, I wouldn't mind being a carpenter. Oh, well, you could always make your own coffin. <laughs> what a steady job, isn't it? I always thought you were a bright kid. Well, what then? Insurance. <laughs> Insurance? What do I know about working in an office? But will you use your imagination? The truth will get you no place. That's a bad habit to get into, telling the truth. I haven't even got a suit. I'm thinking of the future, sir. I believe in 10 or 15 years, buildings will be going up so fast, they won't be able to insure them quick enough. Really, Mr. McGuire? And there'll be so many cars on the road, sir. There'll be wonderful opportunities in insurance. Really? Yes, sir. I don't think the roads will be able to cope with all the cars. Could you go to a Christian Brothers school, Mr. McGuire? Oh, I couldn't go to one, sir. But the mother, she couldn't afford to send me to one, sir. I've taken on all sorts of jobs to help her. She's a wonderful woman, sir. Have you got your birth certificate? I tried to get it on the way here, sir. I very nearly didn't come to the interview at all. Why was that? I found out that my father and mother weren't married when I was born. It was an awful shock to learn that I'm a bastard. I'd be prepared to pay you three pounds a week for a trial period of uh, a month. How do you like the new suit, Billy? Your head'll soon be bigger than your mouth. Oh, jealous heart! Oh, jealous heart! Oh, jealous heart! Paddy, will you stop? It's all right, Matt. I was just combing me hair. Can't go out the new suit without combing me hair, can I? I'm warning you, Ma. Get him to cut it out. Paddy, is there no use in talking to you? Now, how do I look, Ma? You look gorgeous altogether. Now, I look gorgeous. This story's gonna take all night. Look, will you get on with the watch box? Mm. Well, the waitress comes, you see, and she puts a chicken, a whole one, down on the table, see? Three points, please. And then she goes away, you see? Don't tell me you're drinking points. Don't worry, huh? I'll get one for you, too. Ah, Jamie, are you listening to the bleeding story? Ah, oh, for God's sake, Maguire, will you dry up and let him tell the story? And your man calls our bike and says, Hey, missus, this chicken, one leg is shorter than the other. And your woman, she says nothing for a minute, you know. The next thing she says, you know, she says, Are you going to eat it or are you going to dance with it? Oh, Jane, you heard it, Harry. I never knew a Protestant who could tell a story without making a song and dance out of it. Oh, thanks very much, Paddy. <laughs> It's not just a drink. It's a friend. A quotation from a humble genius. Conceived in a watch box. You know, his father was a night watchman. One of the best. 27 years. Never missed a day's work. A night watchman. Never missed a day's work. Mental age 12. You know, one time, somebody said to his father, a watch box, that's a very strange place to bring your wife at night. He says, it's my wife. Who ever said it was my wife? Yeah, lovely woman. Snagging a whiskey every night before she went to sleep. There's a lovely drinking companion. His mother was a pro, his father was a protestant. <laughs> <laughs> I've been searching for you, you feminist cretin. I talk about a stage Irishman. Hey, Janie, that's a spicy bit of stuff in the skirt. You shut your mouth, sir, you, you gibbering idiot! You have abused my hospitality, you unprincipled lecher. Uh, just make mine a pint, Rob Roy. A pint? Yes, a pint. 
Just because you're an orange man in drag is no reason why I should refuse the offer of a drink. You seduced my housekeeper at Hogmanay. Did you ever try to seduce an octopus? Can you deny that you placed your hemlock person inside the innocent bowery of that dear gentlewoman who is my friend, companion and doctor? Galley slave. Do you deny it? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. No, now I could have, but then again, uh, well, you can't take the bridges of a Highlander, can you? Or can you? You rotten papist, you renegade, that poor woman. That poor woman just wanted to vent her pent on a gent without a cent whose glass is empty. Anyway, what's that got to do with you, you impudent old orange man? Impudent? How dare you? you? You wouldn't know what to do, even if you got the chance. My manhood is untarnished, either by filth or disease or self-indulgence. But as for you, you half-starved Methuselah. I have to go through this every time I want him to buy me a drink. Oh, why did I ever leave me beautiful heels to fester in the cesspit of banality and bad manners? He's running out of steam. And when he offers to buy a drink, you ask for a pint, even if you don't want it. And I'll drink it down myself later on. In heaven's track with her too. What are we all drinking? Uh, well, there's two pints over here, Haggis. Ah! 